Want to unleash your feminine force? By the end of this video, you will know how. With gems and crystals. Hi, this is Victoria Vives Quang, and I work with women who want to reignite their passion, their femininity, and their sexuality. And by the end of this video, you will know a technique to do exactly that. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe and click that bell so that you can receive all the goodness. If you consider yourself what some refer to as right brain oriented, meaning that you connect more with abstract matters, maybe more intuitively, and maybe a little bit less intellectual, this is going to be like second nature to you. <laughs> Otherwise, don't worry, because I have a lot of clients that consider themselves left brain oriented, meaning more intellectual, and had amazing results with the techniques we're going to learn today. They found more self-confidence, intuition, self-love, and other benefits. So get ready for this. Since ancient times, we have worked with the power of ritual in order to declare, amplify, empower our intentions. And in this way, we can celebrate it with our communities. So these sometimes are transitions like rites of passage, weddings, birthdays or celebrations like quinceañera or sweet 16. Sometimes it's just smaller transitions like waking up in the morning and having our morning routine that we know it sets us for the day so that we have a better experience. So ritual is something that we can bring to every aspect of our lives in order to gain more insight, more depth and more sacredness in our lives so that we can create our life and manifest more consciously what we are experiencing. Sometimes in the world that we live in, we are more focused on doing, 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 and this is part of our masculine side. If we want to empower ourselves as women and tap more into the divine feminine, we can start incorporating just small rituals into our lives. It can be so enjoyable and it will help you connecting more with your body, with your environment, with the elements, with the seasons, so that you are more in tune with nature, in tune with your cycles as well. So we're going to be working with crystals and gemstones, and we're going to also connect with the cycles of the moon. Super excited to share this with you. So why rituals? I remember once with my husband, we were going always into the same story. It's like we were like playing our roles and every time that we would get to a certain point, we got into an argument. And at that point I said, enough, this is ridiculous. We're just like playing our roles. Let's cut off this right now. And I realized that unless we use some kind of ritual to shake a little bit our psyches, <laughs> to go a little bit out of the routine of the everyday life, we would not move forward and let that go. So we decided to do a special ritual. We sat together, we uh, crafted how it is going to be, and it was an amazing experience. It helps us connecting so much. So imagine when we celebrate things like weddings and birthdays, all of that brings us together. So we can always do this to connect with ourselves, our beloved, our families, our friends, and it can be an amazing experience. By the way, if you want to see the video of this story, you can check the video up here. Oh my goodness, I am excited to share it with you. Now, let's get started with the ritual. The first step is going to be your intention. What are you wanting to accomplish with this ritual? This is super important. When we go through our days without intention, it's almost like our energy is all over the place. So in the morning, we always want to have an intention. And for rituals also, it's almost like a channel that is going to conduct our energy so that we accomplish something. And when we set our intention, we have three possibilities. It might be something that you want to manifest, or it might be something that you want to release, or it might be something that you want to complete. <laughs> so you can choose it by thinking about what is important in your life right now. If it is something that you want to create, something that you want to release, or something that you want to complete, or you could take a more intuitive approach, meaning that instead to choose for an, from an intellectual level, you close your eyes for a moment 
and allow the answer to come to you. So this is one of the ways in which you can start connecting with your intuitive aspect of the feminine, just closing your eyes and see what comes to you. Once you have decided what is the intention, then we want to make sure that we're going to write it. That is going to help us focus in more the energy and also start remembering more and bringing more energy into it. So if it is something that you want to manifest, we want to make sure we do it in the form of an affirmation. So you write an affirmation. Let's say that you want to have a beautiful relationship. You don't want to, you're feeling lonely maybe. So you don't want to have more loneliness, but you're not going to put that. You're not going to put, I don't want loneliness or I don't want to be alone. Instead, we put the affirmative aspect. If you are into affirmations, you already know this, but I prefer to cover it just in case. (laughs) So we will look for what we want instead. I want to feel companion, uh, that I have a companion in my life. I want to be with my beloved and enjoy times together. It can be something that evokes an emotion in you, how you want to feel. That's super important for manifesting how you want to feel because is what is going to bring that energy, is going to bring the, the emotion of the energy to manifest that that you want. So we want to focus on that. Now, if you want to release something, then you can put it like that. I want to release something because sometimes um, we might use other language that is a little more like, I don't want this, I don't want that. But if we say, I easily release this, That sounds a little more like, oh, it feels good. (laughs) So you want to write something that that means what you want, what is your intention, but at the same time, it feels good. It's like, oh, it's with ease and grace. Anything that you want to put so that it makes you feel peaceful. And lastly, the completion option would be just writing something that you complete. And you can also add the words, I easily complete this. It can be maybe something that you have been working on for a while and you just want to complete it already. (laughs) I finished my book. I finished my career. I complete this project. Just put it. And what I recommend is to take some time to envision yourself. How would you feel if at this moment you complete this? We want to start bringing a lot of this visualization and emotion into it so that we make it more real is part of the manifestation and the ritual that we're going to be creating together. Great. So now that we have the intention, we want to sync it with the cycles of the moon. And in order to sync it with the cycles of the moon, what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, start paying more attention to moon cycles. Because when, when I used to go and live in the wild for three days out of the week, that helped me so much connecting with nature, with the cycles, and it brings a different wisdom into our bodies that we are more in sync with our environment. But when we live in, indoors, right, with the inside of the buildings, we sometimes might not know exactly if we are in, in a new moon, the full moon. However, if you are outdoors, sleeping outdoors, and there is a full moon, you notice it because it's so bright. <laughs> it's like they shine a, a flashlight on your face. It's like there is no doubt tonight is a full moon. <laughs> so we want to make sure to start getting back into those cycles, which brings a lot of connection and, and almost like this inner wisdom that we feel that we are in the flow with what is happening in our environment. It's super important. It helps us with our sanity, our nervous system. It helps so much. So we're going to see the calendar for the the next moons, the full moon and the new moon specifically. So if you're going to work with manifesting something, we want to go for the next new moon. And if you want to release or complete something, you want to look for the next full moon. And ideally, this is something that you start just adding to your life and becomes part of your culture, your rituals, that every time that there is a new moon, you start a manifestation process so that if you start a project in your work or in school or whatever is the matter, you set it with this intention in the manifesting new moon 
So you do your ritual, and then as you progress through the month, and then you reach the full moon, that would be like the completion or releasing parts of it that don't uh, serve you any longer. But we want to start seeing that creation and manifestation process from the new moon to the full moon. For us women, understanding cycles and allowing ourselves to sing with them and to flow with them can be very, very empowering because we have our own cycle with our menstruation. So by learning these cycles of the moon and starting seeing the beauty of, oh, this is a time for this and this is a time for that, we then can apply that to our own lives and our own cycles. Awesome. So now we have the intention. Now we have also the moon, whether it is the new moon or the full moon, whatever you have chosen. So the next step is going to be to work with the power of crystals. And we have one of my favorite, favorite gemstones, which is moonstone. I just love this crystal. It has a, what is called a dual essence, which is a pearly opalescence cast by light diffraction. And because of this, ancient civilizations would actually think that it has solidified moon rays inside, like trapped moon rays inside. It's, it's just so captivating. It's amazing. And also another thing that is interesting is that they would think in Rome, um, they would think that if we put one moonstone in our mouth, when there is a full moon, we could see our future. Well, I don't recommend to do that <laughs> because this is actually a sodium potassium aluminum silicate, meaning that it has alu uh, aluminum. And aluminum might not be the best for health, so let's not do that. But it is an interesting fact. It's, it's fascinating to learn these things. Uh, at least it feels very interesting to me. Let me know if you like these kind of things. I, I would love to hear from you. So when we work with Moonstone, also we start connecting with the energies of the archetypes of the goddesses that work with the moon energy. So in ancient Rome, in ancient Greece, it would be with Diana and Artemis, which actually is the same goddess, it's just like the equivalence. When we want to work with the divine feminine, Moonstone can really bring that aspect of sensuality and almost like a motherly presence. It's almost like it's embracing us and nurturing us and caring for us. So it can be really, really beautiful and, and yummy to work with it. <laughs> and some of the characteristics also is that it's good for transition. So when we start a new cycle, we complete something, we start something, in those situations, it can be also very helpful. It's going to help us developing our intuition and you can even sleep with it. So it was going to help you having more remembrance of your dreams so that you can start working with your dream journal. <laughs> For this process, we want to at least have one moonstone. But if you can have three, that would be ideal. And it comes in different colors. So we can find moonstone in black, in gray, in white, in pink, in peach. And for this, I would recommend to have one that is either white or blue, another one that is either peach or pink, and then a last one that is black or gray. So sometimes they, they are not exactly pure one color or another because, you know, this is nature, this is Mother Earth, so it's not like uh, a machine making crystals of one a specific color. So you might find something that is in between and it's okay. So as long as it is a little bit more uh, defined in that tonality, that's going to help so that we have those three. And the reason why is because we're going to be working with three energetic centers, also called chakras. And chakras is a san Sanskrit word that means will. Helps us connecting with different energetic centers that we can work with so that we balance different aspects in our lives. We're going to be placing each of the moonstones on a chakra. The black or gray one is going to be on the root chakra, which is located at the base of the spine. The pink or peach is going to go on the heart chakra, which is in the center of the chest. And then 
the last one, which is the white or blue, is going to be in the area of the brow chakra or third eye, which is between our eyebrows, just a little bit higher. So those are the three points that we're going to be using. And what we're going to do is that we're going to prepare the crystals. So there are just two steps to prepare the crystals. The first one is going to be to clear them or cleanse them. So we just want to make sure that they have the kind of energy that we want. You know, it's like if we are at home and we put a music that is not pleasant, maybe it's not going to be conducive to focusing our intent, right? <laughs> so what we want to do is to clear any energy. And for that, what we can do is to place them in water with some salt. Or if you are in the ocean or close the ocean, that would be even better because you can bring them to the ocean and just water them and uh, put in them in the water a little bit. And that would be even better. Just be careful. Sometimes they just go in the water and they disappear in, <laughs> in the sun. So just be very aware. Sometimes I just bring a net to make sure that I keep them. <laughs> All right, so that's going to be to clear the energy. And I'm going to just make sure that I share with you different ways. So I'm going to add a link here so that you can see different ways in which you can cleanse the crystals. So the next step is going to be to program the crystals. And to program the crystals, what we're going to do is to almost like imbue our intention in the crystals, asking them almost, you know, when we work with crystals, I just want to explain this so that if you are more um, like left brain oriented and it's more intellectual, you need uh, more of that aspect. What I what I like to to share with my clients and students is that our ancestors, especially shamans, would work with things that they found in nature. So this creates this connection. And it is one of the ways in which we can remember that we are actually part of nature. Sometimes we forget that because we are in a civilization and we don't see ourselves as wild any longer. And this is part of bringing that ferocious divine feminine because the divine feminine is not just about being really, really gentle. It, it needs to bring that energy that is more wild and more connected with, with nature, the rocks, the animals, the plants, all of that. So... In this case, gemstones can really help us with that. And we're going to just do a little bit of a mini ritual before the big ritual, which is holding the three crystals between our hands. So almost like if you are putting your hands in prayer, one against the other, so palm facing to the other palm, but holding the three crystals in between. And the idea is that our palms should not touch so only are connected by the gemstones. That's how we want to do it. And as we do it this way, we're going to place the, the crystals and the, uh, the hands in front of our eyes. And we just start gazing at them. And just almost like if we could speak to them and just asking them to help us with the affirmation or the intention or the releasing or the completion that we want to accomplish. So we start just almost like putting that signature in them so that they can support us with that. And silicates especially are, are set to amplify energy. So if we think of the, the crystal as an amplifier of an intention, uh, you know, you can even think of the crystals in, in our computers or in our watches, we can just think of that and how we can almost like program these crystals. And just by having a moment, just gazing at the crystals and programming them so that they can help us with our intention, this is going to help our ritual going to the next level. It's going to help amplifying our intention. So I'm just taking a moment to do that with my three moonstones. And then after that, you can just bring them against your heart and just breathe in deeply, almost like exchanging energy between you and the crystals. As you breathe in, just bringing the energy of the gemstones into your heart. And as you exhale, you share your own energy with the crystal. So in this way, now you are even more prepared for this ritual. It's not just that you jump into it, but you have done 
the processes, the intention, choosing the moon, and now empowering these crystals so that you can work with them. So it can be super, super powerful. Once you have completed this, we're going to create a sacred space where we can have the ritual. So we want to have everything ready so that when the moon is there, whether it is new moon or full moon, we are all set. <laughs> we have the intention, the, the crystals and the sacred space. The sacred space, what I recommend is to have a place ideally, ideally would be outdoors, but not everybody might feel comfortable. But you know, why, why not? Let's get a little bit wild and just go all the way with this. <laughs> so ideally we have a place where we can lay down outdoors or otherwise it can be indoors, but see if you can have a window close or uh, close to you so that you can still see the moon if it is full moon or just feel uh, as you see into the sky. That is going to magnify the experience of this ritual and just make it really beautiful, really yummy for you. So you can put pillows that you like, maybe a, a little blanket or sheet to cover yourself and be like super cozy, almost like a nest that you are coming into for this beautiful ritual that you are preparing for yourself. And I recommend also to bring the power of herbs. And in this case, more than herbs, I would recommend roses. So if you are able to get some rose petals for this, they can be delicious as a tea. I love to do this. We have several rose bushes in our backyard. So I love to, to have some of the roses. I put them uh, to dry. So normally we put it in the oven, but uh, the oven would be off, <laughs> but we leave it a little bit open, the door of the oven. And in that way, they dry faster. Thus, they contain, they retain more of their aroma. So every time I open this container that I have with rose petals, it's like this caramel, almost like caramel smell comes out of it. And it's just amazing. I just love, love, love these rose petals. So you can have those rose petals. You can cover yourself with some of them and then have like a cup of, of tea, um, like a mug, a mug that you love one of your favorite mugs with water, uh, hot water, and just put some petals also inside. And rose can bring also a lot of nurturing energy, and it's really good to, to calm and heal emotions. As you have the, the mug with water and the roses and the crystals and yourself outside laying down, and placing the crystals of, on each of the chakras. So once again, the root chakra with the dark, darker ones, which is the black and gray, the heart chakra with the pink or peach, and then the brow chakra or third eye with the white or blue. Then you're going to just lay down there and just absorb the energies of that uh, full moon or new moon. And the good thing is the water that you have there with the rose petals is also receiving that. So this is part of the ritual. And you want to just stay there for as long as you wish. I would recommend at least 10, 15 minutes so that you can truly go through the process of focusing on your intention, visualizing your intention, remembering your connection with the cycles, with the moon, with nature, just remembering your divine feminine, empowering your divine feminine, connecting with the crystals, feeling them almost like those rays of moon, those moon rays coming out of the crystals and just almost like you can receive them. Just enjoy yourself. Take this moment for self-care, for relaxation, to, to just recharge with that power of the moon. And as you do this, you will see perhaps some images come to you, some in, uh, some uh, insights come to you. So you want to have some kind of journal to, to write afterwards what comes to you. Maybe it brings some insight for your intention. Maybe it brings some ideas, sometimes even a step-by-step -step processes. It has happened sometimes. So be very aware. And I would love to hear 
how it goes for you. And when you are ready to complete the ritual, just take a deep breath to integrate and take a moment to journal about your experience while you drink your amazing moon-infused rose tea. This will consolidate the process. And that night, you can even keep the crystals on your nightstand or under your pillow to receive further insight and benefits during dream time. And now some do's and don'ts. Do make sure to do this on a regular basis. The more you do it, the more you will get into it, the more benefits you will draw from it. And for don'ts, I recommend to not put candles, not have lighted candles, because that would take off a little bit the connection with the moon. We want to be as much as possible in tune with what is the moon. Is it shining brightly or is a new moon so we cannot see it? Just as much as possible. Don't have any lights, any candles. Also, another thing, another don't <laughs> is going to be that we want to, to just focus on these moonstones that we have shared about, these colors, because there is another crystal that is also sometimes referred to as moonstone and is rainbow moonstone, but it is actually not a moonstone. It's from the same family, it's a feldspar, but it doesn't have the adularescence. So instead of adularescence, it has labradorescence, <laughs> which means that the color, the iridescence is almost like colors. It has like blue or or a little yellow, but it is not like this uh, aspect of the adularescence. So it's a little different, but um, now in the market, they are known as rainbow moonstone and we accept it <laughs> and that's okay, but we want to make sure that for this specific ritual, we work with moonstone. This has been the crystals and gemstones rituals for female empowerment so necessary for us to have the dedication, the time to reconnect with our feminine essence. In our world today, we are swamped with all these responsibilities, all these obligations like nine to five jobs and just being in our heads. It's just not a way of living. What is the meaning of life? if we don't have a moment to connect with our bodies, to connect with our environment, to really find the sacredness in life. And all of this, of course, is so connected with our sexuality. I know that for me, unless I go out of my head and into my body, it's impossible for me to have any relationship with my beloved. Because of this, I'm offering this course. It's a new course that will go through all the processes that we need to move beyond this almost trap that we have put ourselves into and remembering how we can bloom into the ecstatic experience, how we can enjoy each day. Imagine five weeks working in this, but not just the small rituals, but truly a complete transformation of our psyche when it comes to being a woman, releasing the traumas that we had, releasing body shame, releasing any sexual guilt, truly completely transforming our relationship with our femininity so that we can shine as beautiful woman that we are. I would love to work with you at that level, in that depth. So just go to victoriavives.com forward slash ecstatic woman. I look forward to do this journey together to transform and create our sisterhood so that we support each other. Until then, have a beautiful, beautiful day or night. <laughs> I love you. Mwah.